tonight about the importance of learning Torah for Bali Tshuva. We're very fortunate in our generation to have so many Bali Tshuva, which was not true 40, 50 years ago. And uh, it's very important to know how to approach this topic. First of most important to know how important it is to learn Torah. The first Rashi in the Chumash says, Bereshis bar elokim, shvil ha-Torah shenikra reishis, shenemar reishis darko, v'shvil Yisrael shenikra u reishis, Klai Yisrael is also called reishis, which means the beginning, as it says, reishis t'fuaso, that refers to the Klai Yisrael. You see, the whole world was created for this purpose of the Jewish people and that they should be learning Torah. Some years ago, Rabbi Arn Leib Steinman, Shlita, one of the Gedoli Israel, came to Ursameach and he spoke and he started out by saying that there are billions of people in the world and there's a handful of Yidden. And that's what Hashem is concentrating on. We are the ones who are bringing the light to the world. And one of the ways is by learning Torah. It says in Pirkei Avos, Rabbi Yochanan Zakai Omer, Im Torah Harbe, if you have studied much Torah, Al Tazik Tov don't give yourself a lot of credit that is what you were created for. So we see that Torah is, is such an important uh, pursuit for every Jew. Of course, it's not going to be equal for everyone. Depends how much time a person has, and we'll, we'll discuss that. But we just have to know how important it is. Now, in terms of learning Torah, what is it that we should concentrate on the most? The answer is that everything is important. All aspects of Torah, whether it be the Tanakh, whether it would be the Mishnah, the Gemara, the Medrashi, it's Halacha, it's Musu. There's a lot to learn. And it's difficult to know how to divide it up. Is a, in the Gemara it says that a person should divide up his time three ways. You know, one for for uh, Torah Shabbat and one for um, the Mishnah, the Gemara. And they're dividing it up, and we don't necessarily do that because we have we have everything mixed together. When we learn Gemara, we're also learning Mishnah, we're learning Tanakh. There are psukim brought down in the Gemara. Well, you see that the Gemara already dealt with the question of how to divide up your time to make sure you cover all the subjects. Sometimes it will depend on the person's ability. It will depend on if, who he has available to teach him, what kind of shurim he could go to. Now, of course, a person has an obligation of parnasa, has to earn a living, has to support his family, and he has to give time to his family, especially the education of the children. This might minimize the time that it makes him available for learning. But the person has to do whatever he can to try to increase. We see that in our times, people are finding more and more time for learning. I remember 50, 60 years ago, if a person went to a shir on Shabbos, that was considered a great thing. Today, there are many people, they, they learn before davening, is, uh, they learn at night, and even on the train, there's a, a famous uh, Long Island Railroad, the, the, the Dafyomi Shir, and two different trains, two different times. So there are people, when they, when they look for time to learn, they'll be able to find the time. Well, that depends on the, the Ratzon and the desire. I tell a story about the Chavetz Chaim, that someone had a factory that was working on Chavez, and uh, 
So they wanted the Chavetz Chaim to convince him to close his factory on Shabbos. Of course, they felt it was important for the Chavetz Chaim to tell him how he won't lose out. That he, he'll, somehow he can, he can do this, and he can do that, and he work this amount of time, and a different time, and whatever. So they, that's what they told the Chavetz Chaim to tell a person how practically to work it out that he could close on Shabbos and still earn a living. And the Chavetz Chaim says, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to talk about the importance of Shabbos, how important it is to keep Shabbos. And then he'll figure out how to do it. Once you realize how important it is, he'll find a way. And the same thing is with Torah. People will find a way. Sometimes there's even an idea of a, of a short Seder. You know, he used to talk about in the Musi Yeshivas in Europe that some, there was a five-minute Seder. I once uh, met someone who studied in Rabbi Moshe Schneider's yeshiva in London. Goes back uh, probably at least uh, 50 years or so. And uh, he said that there was a distance of four minutes between the base medrash and the diner. And they, the boys had to go three times a day for eating. So and he was very concerned that they should not lose that time. That's four minutes each way. That's eight minutes, three times a day is 24 minutes, he did not want them to lose the, that time. So therefore, he, each boy had to either uh, learn by himself, know what he's going to learn during those four minutes, or have a chavrusa for those four minutes. So we have to make sure that we use our time well. Actually, at the uh, Hespade of uh, Rav Menel Weinbach, Zeyed Tzadik Bracha, was the Rosh Yeshiva of Ur Sameach. Um, Hespe that was given on Asar Bateves, one of the Talmidim told a story about him that uh, there was a, a baseball game being played by the students. And Rabbi Weinbach, Zegatzad Racha, in his younger years, participated in the game. So uh, they said, What did he do? He was, you know, he was in the game now, in a baseball game, you know, you have your time. You have to bat and you have to run around, whatever is the basis. But uh, otherwise, you, know, you sit and you wait. So uh, they said, after he did his, uh, his, got his turn for batting and whatever he, he did, he um, sat on the side and opened up a Gemara. And he said that he was there teaching the, 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 the Talmudim a lesson about how, you know, have a few minutes here, a few minutes there, open up a Gemara. They tell a story about one of the big tzaddikim of Yerushalayim, previous generations, Rav Ruvain Bengis, that he uh, made a siyam on the shas, a very, very special siyam on the shas. So uh, they asked him, what was so special? He learned the shas all the time. He says, this was the siyam on, whenever he had a few minutes here, a few minutes there, he learned the shas, and eventually put it together, the whole shas, during those moments, free moments, and uh, he made a very big seema. So if we have to know to make use of our time, whether it be traveling or waiting for a doctor, or someone was once waiting for the doctor, waiting for someone, and somebody apologized, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, he said, and I said, a Jew never waits. A Jew has, has always has a safer with him, always something he can do to keep busy with talking. So that's I'm saying people can find time to learn. No. Exactly what to learn. So it's important for everybody to know the Chumash, to learn each week the Parsha of the week. Again, it depends how much time a person has available, how, what his ability in learning. Uh, there's a mitzvah of Shnai Mikra V'yachat Targum, which means to read the Torah in the Hebrew twice. And once Targum. Now, Targum literally means the uncle is the Aramaic translation. But the, according to the uh, Poskim, according to the Halacha, you could do it in a different language as long as it's not an exact translation. It gives a little bit of a parish of an interpretation. And uh, if the Living Torah, Barangari Kaplan, St. Tzadabracha, or the Stone edition uh, of the Chumash, the it's not an exact translation, and you could fill the mitzvah with um, reading twice the, the Chumash and once the, the, the translation. Of 
course, besides that, it's good to learn Rashi each week on the parsha. And if a person doesn't have so much time to do all the Rashis, you do some of it, maybe even keep a record. This year I did the first 10 Rashis, next year I did the next 10 Rashis. That's also a good thing to do. It's very important to have a familiarity with the Chumash and with Rashi. Um, now about the time for, uh, of course, learning Gemara, that's really something that everyone should try to get to. It's not easy. It's a big effort. It does take a lot of time. Those people who are still young, even if they're in the middle of their careers, I once said that everything is Hashgach and Chazdei Hashem, that Hashem somehow made it, that a person could take off in the middle of university and take off a year or two and then go back um, and then uh, so take off time for learning because learning is really preparing for life for setting up a Jewish home getting married it's very important to uh, set aside time and so when a person is still young and they do have that opportunity it would be good to put off the career a little bit and get the basic learning skills so that they can um, they'll be able to know how to learn. And that when I mean learn, I mean learning Gemara. There are times here in our Sameach when I would tell a Bachar, um, I'm going to prove to you why you have to stay here a few years. What's the reason? Be'ez Hashem, you're going to get married. And you get married, with Hashem's help, you'll have a boy. And you're going to send him to Yeshiva. And when he gets to be 10 years old, what's he going to be doing? Learning Gemara. So if you want to be able to learn with your 10-year-old son, you have to have a background. You have to know how to read the Gemara. And that'll take you a few years. But again, of course, not everybody is in that position. Some people start later. Some people already are married. Some people already have families. So there too, if a person could have time to take off sometimes, We've had here in Ursameach, uh, sometimes a person will take off a, a week, a month, if, and uh, even if, the, if his wife and children allow him to do it, come to Eretz Israel and put in some intense time in learning. That could be helpful. I don't know if it's going to be enough, but it all helps. Whatever you can do. See, if you're in a yeshiva, then you help. The, the idea of the yeshiva, especially in a place like Ursameach, is to help you build skills for learning Gemara, said so ultimately you would be allowed, able to learn by yourself. Um, we know that there are 48 ways in which the Torah is acquired. It's in Perke Avos, in the sixth parak, and uh, it's, it's a big job to, to try to do all those 48 ways. You can look them over. And one of them is besimcha. That you should learn Torah besimcha. It's a very important thing. Because you know, sometimes people get involved in learning, maybe they don't enjoy it enough, and it, and the drags, and they, they just can't do it for so long. They tell a story about Rav Avram Chaim Pincus. Zegatzai Avracha, father of Rav Shimon Pincus, that he uh, had a certain chavrusa for 60 years. I know in, in America and in Eretz Israel, maybe even before that in Europe, I'm not sure, but he had the same rules for 60 years. And after 60 years, he said to somebody, you know, I think I have to change my chavrusa. So he said, what's wrong? 60 years? I'm sure you probably get along nicely together. So he said... The first time he ever looked at his watch during the Daphne, during the Luri. So he said, you know, I see it's not with that same enthusiasm that I always had. So it's very important to learn the simcha when I, let, when I give a, a young boy a bracha, that he should succeed in his learning. I told him he should enjoy his learning. It's, gonna, it's very important. If you enjoy it, then it's going to be very successful. Now, of course, how do you do it? So the answer is that you have to develop an ability to feel that you're succeeding in your learning. Of course, each person, according to his ability, 
each person according to his background. Some people have a little bit more uh, background and vocabulary. Some have less. If a person uh, does not have so much vocabulary, so in the beginning, he can concentrate more on the content of the Gemara and eventually try to build up the skills and vocabulary. Because it's important to feel that you're accomplishing. If you're just going to only do words and not get the meaning enough, so you're not going to have that satisfaction. So it's important to, uh, in the beginning at least, to, to get into the content, even without the words, but ultimately to try to work on, on the words. Now, one way of doing it is to take a small section and say, look, this small section, I'm going to master it. I'm just going to make sure that I really understand it. I'm going to make sure I know every word in this section. And it may take time. Okay. Then whatever we learn in this world is a small amount compared to what there is in Torah. It's a drop. Chavetz Chaim said the following. He said, if Adam Arisha had not eaten from the Eitz Adaras, what would he have done? He would have lived 6,000 years with his great mind, and he would not have to work. The only reason man has to work is because of the, the curse that came because he ate from the tree. 6,000 years, he would just be learning Torah. He had a great mind, and he would never forget. That also came because of sin that people forget. So he wouldn't forget, and he had a great mind, and he had 6,000 years, and there was enough Torah to keep him busy. So that's one explanation. And the Torah, Chavetz Chaim also says that we have no idea how vast the Torah is. He says that if you would take all the Torah that was ever learned by all the people in this world, back to Moshe Rabbeinu and all the generations, and you subtract that Torah that has been learned from the Torah, the Torah is called Tamima, untouched. So there's no end. And we have to, so therefore we shouldn't feel, well, if I'm going to go too slow, I'm not going to accomplish it. Mean, the answer is, whatever we learn, it's only a small portion of what there is to learn. But if we learn it well, and we master it, then we'll have that satisfaction, and that's important. To have the satisfaction, because the satisfaction will bring you to Simcha, and then you'll be happy with learning, and you'll be excited, and you'll want to learn more, because you feel you're accomplishing. So it's very important to take even a small section, and really master it, whether it be the words, whether it be the content. And it's good sometimes to even say it over to someone else. Tell us there was a rabbi. A rabbi, his name was Rabbi Yosef Toysik, uh, Shlita, who, um, when he was a boy, uh, when, when, actually when he got married, he, um, he invited a lot of bachram to his chasa. I asked him, how come you have more friends than everybody else? He says, because his, when he was young, his father said to him the following, whatever you learn, the halacha, shat nechumish, gemara, whatever, you have to say it over to 10 people. Whatever you learn, you have to say it to 10 people. So he had to have a lot of friends to tell all, all this Torah to. So saying it over to somebody else is a very good thing, and it, it'll show you that whether you really understand it or not. So this is one of the methods to get into learning by just taking a, a small portion and, and knowing it well. Of course, as far as having a Rebbe, one possibility is to go to a Shir, another possibility is to have a private Rebbe, even if it may sometimes cost money, if the person could afford it, it's surely a worthwhile investment. See, in a Shir, a person can get a certain amount of ability and skills, but there's no question that privately you'll do better, of course, and learning the Chavrusa is also important, when possible, because in the Chavrusa you talk it out, you know, when you learn by yourself, you can sometimes fool yourself and think, I understand it, and you don't really understand it, but if you have to explain it to a Chavrusa, then that'll be a proof that you understand it. So that will all depend on, on the situation that's made available. Now, in learning Torah, this, is, this actually fits in with what I've been saying, is that there's like learning Torah, and the Limanah Torah, and the Torah, and knowing the Torah. 
what, what you learn, you have to try to remember it. Not only to master it, but to remember it. So you learn halachas, you review them, you say, oh, I know these halachas. Whether it be the tilas yadayin, whether it be uh, the laws of uh, emotsi, the uh, laws of Shabbos. You know, to, to learn halachas and, and make sure you know them and, and, and review them. See, a person, as I mentioned before, about the, the four minute Seder on the way to the dining room in the Moshe Schneider's yeshiva. So there's an idea of a person, if you have time, you're traveling. Today, Baruch Hashem, people uh, listen to, to uh, all kinds of uh, shiurim on, on whatever it be, MP3s or whatever else is available. It used to be uh, cassette tapes. Today it's different. Um, you, you, you can listen to words of Torah, and it's also good. Maybe things like shiurim, or maybe just musr, but it's, uh, it's, it's all good. See, the more a person fills his, Torah, his head with Torah, then the more it keeps other things out of his head. So I heard this from Rab Chaim Shmulavitz, Sayyid Tzad of the Rosh Hashiva, the Mir Yeshiva, that to try to fill up your head with Torah is going to just push other things out. Rambam says that people get into trouble, certain Averis, because they have a, a lave ponim in a Torah. If their heart is, is empty from Torah, then they get into, other, into trouble. It's a very high level to reach. Now, we only think that's the big tzaddikim, like Rabbi well, Yoshev Zegel Tzadik of Racha, who was one of the biggest masmidim, I mean, in, of our generation for sure. And, and you know, well, who could be like him? The answer is every person in his own way. Just try to make good use out of the time, as I mentioned before, about having a Seder and a few minutes here, a few minutes there. And as far as when to start, it's never too late, because at any age, it says the Rambam brings down that a person is chayv to learn Torah his whole life, whether he's old, whether he's young, whether he's sick, whether he's healthy, whether he's a person that has to support a family, you have to always be learning Torah, the, always that obligation is there all the time. So, a person didn't get a chance till a later age, to try how to do it, right. try to work it out. As far as using uh, help with uh, translations, if if a person needs it, then it's it's okay to do. If you can, like, have a rebbe who teaches you uh, to read it in the in the original and and in the Gemara, and help you translate it and and, and listen to you read it, and that will surely be better. But not always is that possible. So sometimes with the translations, you can be more, you can be successful also. But as I say, the, the age doesn't make a difference any time. And as much as you can learn, when Rabbi Yisachar uh, French Lita spoke, not this one, the one before this, he, sp he spoke about how important it is to have regular learning and, and all the time and and so he ended off his, his schmooze by saying, never too late, never too little, but never enough. You have to always just keep increasing. I'll tell you a, a personal story. Um, when Rabbi Scheinberg said, the Tzadik Levrocha, who we know lived to over 100 when he was in his, already in his 90s. So I asked him a question, which is actually asked in the Gemara. They asked various Tanoim, Amoroim, and they would ask them, Bameharachta Yomi, like, what is the cause of your long life? Like, what's the secret to your long life? Now, he could have said he didn't have to answer, but <laughs> I don't because the Gemara they answered that he decided to answer too. And he could always say, How does a person really know? I mean, of course, he's always doing Torah and mitzvahs and all kinds of things, does he know which is the cause? But he did give me the answer. He said, it's called Chizik and Torah, strength in learning Torah. He says, Torah is magni umatzle u It protects, it saves, and it gives long life. But the main thing is you got to keep increasing, keep adding on, keep doing more and more. So that's it. That's what we're here for. And and everybody could do it. I went to Rabbi Shmuel Sayyid Tzadik Abrocha writes that um, there's no such thing as an aptitude for Gemara. Since every Jew has an aptitude. Now, of course, there are those who find it easier, those who find it harder. But it's determination. And each one according to his ability. If a person 
who has very like difficulty in learning in general. But even even he, let's say, he'll take a small piece of Gemara, and he may have to spend a long time on it. But in the long run, if he masters, it'll be considered a great accomplishment. So there's no no reason to say that you know I just can't do it. It's the only if you feel you had a like a certain quota, you had to learn a certain amount, a certain amount of time. So you could say, well, I won't be able to do that. But since there is no such thing, then you just have to do whatever you can do and, and try to accomplish as much as possible. Now, also another idea that the Chavaz Chaim brings down is that every word of Torah is a mitzvah. Every word that you say. I mean, actually, we have this, he brings from the Vilna Gom, that the Chavaz Chaim adds that you can do 200 words in a minute. So therefore, it's 200 mitzvahs of Torah, and Torah is the most important mitzvah. Therefore, you're getting 200 of the most important mitzvah. Even in, so therefore, every time you have a chance, you should learn. And also very important is to do review. So you might say, well, if I'm reviewing, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going forward. Doesn't matter. It's all mitzvahs. Even if you say the same thing over again. I once uh, I didn't actually attend, but I heard of a, a siyam. Somebody made on Gemara Makis. Many people make a, a siyam on Gemara Makis. It's not too long. So he said it was his 101st siyam on Maseches Makis. So he said he learned it so many times. It's not called waste time. I always wonder, you know, the Gedoli Israel. you know, they're learning and they're learning and they're learning. Didn't they learn it already? Okay, as I mentioned before, the Torah is infinite, but still, you know, the Gemaras, they keep learning over and over again. Never too much. Just keep doing it over and over, and, it's, and of course we say that the more you learn something, the more you understand it better. And people on Mechadish Kedushin, they have new insights in Gemara's that they already learned. See it in a new way. Yeah. Of course, a very important thing is to set aside time on a regular basis, like every day at a certain time, to learn. We find that this is one of the questions that a person has asked when he leaves this world. Kavata itim la Torah, did you set aside set times for learning? And it's very important wherever possible not to miss this time. There's a, a certain rav in uh, Bayit Vagan here in Eretz Yisrael, New Shalayim, who has a daf yomi shir. And uh, I once went to a, uh, a vart, somebody who, got engaged, who was engaged, and uh, I'm a rabbi or one of the family came late and he, said, and he explained why did he come late. He says, I go to this daf yomi shir. This Rebbe doesn't let you out for any reason. You have a simple go later. You can't, you can't miss the shir. So sometimes it's good to have that external uh, incentive, but uh, you know, each person should try as much as possible. Set aside times and, and learn and learn and learn. And, you know, it's going to add up. It's gonna add up. Sometimes I'll say to a bacher in the yeshiva, uh, did you have a successful day of learning? So, he may say yes, he may say no, but I say, look, if you used your time well, if you really put in the time and try to learn as much as you could according to that, in that time, you it's automatic progress. It's, it's progress. You don't have to it's measure your practice. You have to know that each day you add and learn more and more, and that's how you will succeed. Now, I want to answer some of the questions that were asked by people help Bali Tshuva be able to uh, get into the Torah learning. Um, I think I sort of mentioned that a person has any disability in learning, then he should try to learn. And we say a person who has more difficulty will get me more reward. So Hashem gives 100 times as much reward to a person who does a mitzvah with difficulty. And I've heard from Rabbi Scheinberg, who said that a person who has a Difficulty in learning is much more successful than the one that has it easy because the one who has it easy he doesn't make such a big effort. The other one has to make a big effort and then he finally gets it and it's, it's much more, um, he knows it better because he had to work harder to get it. Now, if a person has to uh, take off the time from his career to get into the learning, it's for sure a good idea. Hopefully, with Hashem's help, he won't forget what, is, what he. His career, 
Of course, you can always keep reviewing it so that you shouldn't forget it. But it's a very important thing to learn Torah continually. If a person takes off a week, a month, a year, and it's continuous, there's the famous story of um, Rabbi Akiva, which is told by Rabbi Chaim Shmulavitz, uh, Rashi Vodemir Yeshiva. He said the following, that the Gemara says that Rabbi Akiva, um, he was 40 years old, he got married, and his wife was disowned by her father for marrying Rabbi Akiva, who was a shepherd, he wasn't a learned person, and the reason she married him is because she saw he had potential. So after um, 12 years, he came home, and with 12,000 students, he really accomplished in those 12 years. And then he, uh, I remember he was listening at the window, and his wife was talking to some people, and they were saying, how could you let your husband stay away so long? It's a wrong thing to do. You shouldn't do it. And she answered those people, if it would be up to me, I'll let him stay away for another 12 years. And he heard it. And he left. He didn't even go in to say hello, according to the interpretation of Rav Chaim And uh, so he explained by saying, and, and we know that he went away for 24 years, and he, and he came up back with 24,000 students eventually, that he says it would be an interruption. He says 12 and 12 was not 24. It was 24 years without an interruption. This is a story that's a little above us, not for our generation, but the lesson that we can learn from it is to try to learn Torah without interruptions. You know, put a little vacation here, a little vacation there. It's, gonna, it's an interruption. It says actually in Rashi, the Chumash, uh, about the Torah, if you leave me for one day, I'll leave you for two days. So it's very important to have continuous learning. And that's one of the great things about the Dafyomi. I once heard a uh, person who made a seam on the Dafyomi, he was a, he's a dentist, and he, and he gave a speech at his seam of Shas, he furnished the whole Shas. And he explained how when you have the obligation of the Dafyomi, you just can't do things. You, know, you can't go on a vacation here, you can't vacation here, you can't take off a day here. It's got to keep going, otherwise you're going to get behind. So that, that's really a great thing. Now, about, generally about learning the Dafyomi, it definitely has a great value, each person according to his ability. Uh, if a person goes to a shear, I'm sure he'll get a certain amount out of it. Of course, as he won't be doing what I mentioned before about the getting into the learning on your own and really going deep. Um, so if it depends on the person's situation, if a person feels that he really wants to do the Dafyomi, huh? It definitely, uh, there are so many people doing it, I can't say that it's not the right thing to do. But uh, you, know, it's, you can do both. You can go to Dafyomi and have a certain amount of time for learning more in depth. That's for sure a good idea. Um, as I say, one of the most uh, appropriate subjects for Bali Chuba to learn. So uh, it's, uh, I don't think there's any special thing. The Bali Chuba, I mean, everyone has to learn halacha, whether it be a Bali who didn't learn it when he was young, or even older people have to keep going over and learning more and more halacha. We'll never really cover it completely. And, uh, of course, Musa is very important to learn. It's good to have a little time out every day to study some Musa. That could, it doesn't have to be in Hebrew, it could be in English. And, uh, as I mentioned before, learning of the Chumash, and Chumash and Rashi. And, uh, and besides learning Gemara, it's good to, if a person could learn Mishnayis. Mishnayis is a very important thing because it gives you the, the scope. You have like ideas in the whole Shas, especially if a person is going to learn the uh, areas that not everybody learns. Kodesh and Tyrus, be able to learn it. Today they uh, have English translations of everything and it's very helpful in order to get, get the scope and get the knowledge. It says that, I think the Chavetz Chaim encouraged people to get a lot of, uh, cover a lot of ground, because when you come to Olam Abba, and it's going to be continual learning of Torah forever and ever, so at least you were exposed to many different areas of Torah. So that is a good thing to do when possible. Um, okay, as far as learning with Chavusa, learning alone, that depends. 
it depends two things. First of all, if you can find a good chavrusa, sometimes maybe let's say he had a chavrusa and uh, he was not interested in learning, and then he was and the talking part of the time, so that may not be such a good idea. But if you have a, a good chavrusa and you learn well together, it's surely a very good thing. But sometimes it's not available, or if for whatever reasons you just doesn't work out, then you try to learn on your own. Now, a person who's afraid of going a little bit too uh, too deep into the Torah and too intense, and uh, each person has to know for himself. Sometimes a person does need a little break. If he sees that he's getting uh, a little too involved, but in general, Torah won't hurt. Torah is, is definitely, it says in the Perkei Ava also brings a possible Chol Sar Marpe, it cures people. And it, it's, it's a good thing for everything. Um, now, the person at an older age has the question about he's over 40, should he study Kabbalah? There is such an idea of studying Kabbalah after, after 40, but along with that condition of 40, it says that a person has filled himself up with Shas and Poskin that he really knows all the Gemaras and all the Shulchan Arach. So it's not too likely in this case. And I, I'm not so much in favor of studying Kabbalah. It doesn't mean you can't uh, read something here, read something there from the, from the Zohar. Nothing wrong with that, but just not to get too involved in it. Um. Mm-hmm. You know about a person who uh, starts late, he has a family, has responsibilities, so... We spoke about that, that you would just have to try to find time, whatever you can do. It's all going to be beneficial. I'll just tell you once I, something I heard from Rabbi Victor Miller on a tape. He, uh, someone asked him, if I'm a working man, how could I really be a bad Torah? How could I really be involved in Torah? So Rabbi Miller answered by saying that uh, you have Shabbos, he says, first of all, Shabbos. You, know, you should set time for learning, which would be a, a long Friday night in the winter. Or he said in the day, or on Shabbos in the summer, he says, some people, they, uh, after eating the chalant, they get under the covers and they wake up for mincha. He says, you're not going to be able to be a ventura if you're not going to use the time on Shabbos for learning. And then he said, Sunday, he says, you know, he, the wife should pack you up a lunch and go learn for the whole day on Sunday. And then you come home at night and he says, I don't mean 6 o'clock, I mean 10 o'clock now. This may not work for everybody, but I'm just telling you what Rav Miller said, and if somebody could do it, of course, you need the cooperation of the wife and the, and the children, and you know, you have to be careful on that too, not to, uh, you know, neglect the family responsibilities. Of course, it's always good to have a Rav, a Das Torah, to consult with what's the best thing to do, and of course, you know, with, with totally with the, with the family's uh, agreement and permission, of course, if they do go along with that, it's a very big schus. We know that's the school. The Gemara asked the question, what is the schus of women? That they wait for their husbands to come home from learning, they bring their children to learn. So that's for sure a, a very big schus for them, but everything according to the situation. So i just like to uh, give everyone who's going to be involved, who already is involved. I have another quick question. More about for a woman. How how can a how can a woman apply some of these? Uh, these All right, that now I'm okay. Sure yeah, women uh, who would like to get into learning of Torah, and for sure it's important. Um, the main difference between men and women in terms of learning Torah is the obligation of Gisa Yom to Pesach in Yoshua, that a man is obligated to learn Torah day and night, according whenever he has time, and uh, not stop learning. But a woman does not have that obligation. However, it's important for a woman to learn and to know. For instance, all the halachas that apply to women is a woman's obligation. That's the question is asked. How could a woman say a bracha on the Torah? Last I said that I'm obligated to be involved in Torah, but a woman is not obligated. The answer is one of the answers is that a woman is obligated to know all the halachas that apply to her. And there's halachas of Shabbos, halachas of brachas, halachas of nida. I mean, and the truth is, it shall never finish. <laughs> Just like men never finish learning all the halachas, women also not finish. So therefore, it's important for a woman, 
according to her time, because she has responsibility to, first to her family, but whenever she can go to Shurim, and if she wants to get into the a learning in the Sfarim itself, it's a very good idea to learn uh, you know, Shulchan Aruch, or even what we call Kitsurim, short uh, forms of the Halacha, where you get the basic Halachas that apply, it, it's definitely a good thing to do. And a woman and a woman could surely study Chumash, they could study Tanakh, Gemara is something that women generally do not learn. Of course, they could hear things about Gemara, nothing wrong with that, but uh, they would generally not be involved in that. I want to give a bracha for everybody that you should be uh, successful in the learning of Torah. And we should know that by learning Torah, we come closer and closer to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. And uh, that's Hashem, with the more Torah we learn, will help to bring the gula. It says in the, in the Arachayim, the Kodesh brings down that Moshe Rabbeinu says, I do not want to help to redeem a nation that is bought from the Torah. And is not learning Torah. Baruch Hashem, today we see more and more people are involved in Torah. Hopefully that will bring the gula, Shlema, the Herabi Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.